One million man protest loses steam in Abuja as demonstration ends Saturday. Police chaplain, daughter abducted in Zamfara, seek help to regain freedom. 19 more bodies recovered from Bielsa boat mishap. On the foreign scene, last slide kills eight in Ugandan capital. Hello and welcome to Trust TV's news update. I am Chiamaka Mwafo. Thank you for joining us. As the hunger protest reaches day 10, concerns about the magnitude of the demonstrations has been on the minds of both the government and citizens following the turnout of the nationwide demonstration which turned violent in different parts of the country. In the FCT, however, the demonstration, after a few days of scuffle between the police and demonstrators, seemed to be calm with little or no visible activity. Trust TV Sagir Ibrahim gives an update from the Mashud Abiola National Stadium. The demonstrations started on the 1st of August calling the attention of the government to the hunger and difficulties faced by millions of Nigerians. It as well demanded for an end to bad governance in the country. Ten days later, the Moshud Abiola Stadium, the venue of the demonstrations in Abuja, seemed deserted at first glance, with security personnel visibly seen around the vicinity. Upon accessing the facility, a handful of activists sitting peacefully by the entrance say they are there to carry on. For me, it's to come... Stay here, let them come and tear gas me. I'm a mother in the land. And you need to be able to, to, to look at the quantum. I cannot go to the market and smile. I cannot go to the petrol station and smile. We cannot buy Gary anymore. For the poorest of the poor, they cannot afford Gary. So what am I doing? As I'm sitting down here, for the many hours that I have sat here, how many women have died on the maternity death row? How many of them? The reason why I came in here is, Instead of sitting down and be receiving news of how they shot the children, let them, me that I, is even closer to going home to my father. Is it not better for me to come and stay here with them or to watch at home and be watching that our children have been killed? Sometimes government does not even want to hear that people are protesting because government feels that if people express mass dissatisfaction with the policy, it registers on their credibility. So they, they, they want to cover it up. And so oftentimes police now take their obligation as to stop protests instead of ensuring that every protest is peaceful, orderly. They say despite the low turnout on day 10, their messages have been heard loud and clear. Nigerians know that they are winners. Right now, I think they have demystified the, the strength of uh, even traditional rulers because they all came to President Tunubu. Traditional rulers, religious leaders, they all came and they, they vowed to go and tell their people not to protest. Have they not protested? You have a huge population of children that wake up in the morning and can go nowhere, graduates, and they are in their multiple of millions. And so I, I, I want to say that, uh, you know, we have succeeded. Okay, if you look at protests from the perspective of uh, 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 agreeing to the demand, it's a failure. Now, that, that failure is on government, and so it tells a story that we are living with a very repressive, undemocratic government. But the essence of whether you are a people's person is how you govern. After the six days, many people have come out, big people, to start engaging the government before everybody was behaving like ostrich. Now everybody is coming out to harvest the gains of these 10 days. While the demonstrations might not have gained momentum in Abuja, the activists are confident that the 10 days of mass action will awaken a conversation among Nigerians on the need to demand more from their government, especially as their living conditions continue to be negatively impacted by its policies. From the Moshud Abiola National Stadium in Abuja, Sagir Ibrahim for Trust TV News. Now we go to Cardinal State where the government has banned processions not verified and cleared by security agencies hence Fourth, the State Commissioner for Internal Security and Home Affairs, Samuel Aruan, who disclosed this in a statement, said the decision was arrived at after security, State Security Council revealed the present security situation arising from the existing 6 p.m. to 8 a.m. curfew and other issues pertaining to public safety. Commissioner Aruan said the ugly events of 1st and 5th August 2024 are clear indicators that criminals are pursuing an agenda to plunge the state into chaos using protest as camouflage. 
He said while the State Security Council recognizes the fundamental rights of citizens to freedom of expression, lawful assembly and other constitutional rights enshrined in the 1999 constitution as amended, Arawan warned that the security forces cannot permit a situation wherein criminals masquerade as protesters to loot and vandalize public and private properties and unleash terror on innocent citizens as experienced on the 1st and 5th of August 2024. Finally, citizens are enjoined to continue to observe the 6 p.m. to 8 a.m. curfew and report any incendiary activity to the security operations room. Despite the call for the suspension of the planned national prayer that was built to begin this Saturday, a special prayer session still took place at the Isiaku Rebu Mosque at Gurundutse area of Dala local government area in Kanu state. Recall that the hashtag end bad governance nationwide peaceful protest that started on August 1st, 2024 was marred by a series of violent attacks on public and private properties across some states, resulting in looting, killings and injuries. Due to the degeneration of the protest, some groups of youths have called for a nationwide prayer as an alternative option to seek God's divine intervention. The cancellation of the national prayer was announced in a video clip posted by one of the organizers of the national prayer, Mubarak Ibrahim Lawan, in Kano. <laughs> It's a sad event. The chaplain of the All Saints Police Protestant Church, Mopold 42 Mobile Base in Guzo, Pastor Issa Andrew and his 13-year-old daughter, identified as Grace, who were whisked away by suspected terrorists, have urged the First Lady, Olure Mitinubu, and other Nigerians to come to their aid to enable them regain freedom from the hands of terrorists. They made the appeal in a now viral video released by their abductors who have given them six days from Saturday, August 10, to produce an additional six million naira, two boxer motorcycles and one Honda motorcycle, or they would marry off the 13-year-old daughter who is in captivity with her father. Pastor Andrew and his daughter Grace were abducted at their residence behind the Karma Hotel Bypass in Guzo on the 14th of July 2024 and have been in the terrorist enclave for about four weeks now. According to Pastor Andrew, his family had negotiated with the terrorists and paid six million naira as ransom after it had sold all the items they had and received assistance from people of goodwill. He said the abductors are still demanding an additional six million naira, two boxer motorcycles, one Honda motorcycle before they would free them. Hello Nigerians, I want to beg of you, I want to beg on our First Lady, the Mother of the Nation, please come to our aid. She is the Esther of our time, please come to our aid. Our daughter has been exposed to a lot of maltreatment, a lot of exposed to starvation. She doesn't even know what she's supposed to do. My condition is increasing every day. I'm diabetic. Please, I want Nigeria to come to our aid. I want Nigeria to come to our aid. Assist us. What is needed now is six million naira and two buzzers, motorcycles, and uh, Honda Honda motorcycle. Please come to our aid. Assist us. They have given us from now <coughs> to pause the next week. Otherwise, we are going to be executed. My wife is going to be, uh, my daughter is going to be sent on, on, on marriage. She's just 13 years, this is one. Please help us, help us, help us. I need your help. Help us in this very journey. And the Lord will bless you. Thank you very much. Bandits on Friday evening attacked Tugunzuri community in Musawa, local government area of Katsina State killing one person simply identified as Sani Bello. Two other residents sustained various degrees of gunshot wounds and are currently receiving medical attention at the orthopedic and federal teaching hospitals in Katsina. The bandits whose mission was to rustle animals spent over two hours conducting a thorough search and successfully went away with an unspecified number of animals including four camels 
and 15 motorcycles. Reports say those security personnel were notified in good time. They, however, arrived at the village about 12 hours later, leaving the villagers at the mercy of the hoodlums. Early on Tuesday night, the bandits also attacked Tugunzuri village, abducting one person and rustled over 15 cows. At the moment, reports from the area confirm seeing residents, mostly women, children and the elderly, leaving and surrounding communities while others are leaving Katsina to Kano State. Still in security matters, the Nigerian Army says troops of 6th Brigade have apprehended seven suspected terrorists and recovered a cache of weapons in separate operations conducted in Taraba State. Assistant, Acting Assistant Director, 6th Brigade Army Public Relations, Captain Olubo Dundeoni, disclosed this in a statement on Saturday. According to the statement, a suspected bandit Yusuf Musa was arrested with one AK-47 rifle and 20 rounds of 7.62 mm special ammunition. The statement added that 118 cows were recovered and handed over to the rightful owners. According to the statement, the troops also recovered one motorcycle, four mobile phones and the sum of 57,000 naira from the suspects. The commander, 6th Brigade Brigadier General Kingsley Chidebere Uwa, commended the troops for their dedication and swift action in ensuring the safety of the people of Taraba State. Two people have been reportedly killed, while one other sustained severe machete cuts in area boys from Gurupa and Agunwandokoko, Changaga area of Mina in Niger State, clashed. Residents said the incident, which happened on Friday afternoon, was the second in less than one month, during which shops were attacked and valuables stolen. A resident of Kurupa, Bala Abu, said the boys from Chachaga crossed the river to retaliate the alleged killing of their member at a mining site in the area. A woman who preferred anonymity said she saw a corpse and an injured person being conveyed to IBB Specialist Hospital after the clash. She also reported seeing police personnel in their numbers moving into the area to restore normalcy. Kurupa, a suburb of Mina on the Suleja Expressway, is one of the areas in Mina, Niger state capital, with decades of history of illegal mining and drug abuse. The Kano State Public Complaints and Anti-Corruption Commission and major flour dealers are working to address artificial price hikes in flour and other food items in the state. The price of flour had hit 85,000 naira per bag after the single market was reopened following days of inactivity due to the hunger protest. Here's the report. As the cost of living continues its upward trend across the nation, the Kano state government has sustained efforts towards tackling rising food prices in major markets. On Friday, the Kano State Public Complaint and Anti-Corruption Commission met with master bakers and market leaders associations in the state to address the recent flour price hike following the hunger protests. Most of these people that are into this business, they are rather not the manufacturers, they are dealers, they are middlemen. And there are some middlemen that are taking advantage of you know, the vulnerability of the situation and impose exorbitant price, which is make it difficult for an average Nigerian to afford. Master bakers in the state reported that the price hike led them to halt production. The black marketers and middlemen are the cause of this problem. Before the protest, the price was 64,000 naira, but just within days, it rose to above 85,000 naira. That is why we took action. Dealers in Kano have decided to cut out middlemen and supply flour directly to bakers at an agreed price. Inshallah, we will keep this uh, arrangement that any goods that we have received, we will directly give it to the, uh, the associations of master bakers. And uh, at that uh, point, uh, we urge them to make sure that they distribute it according, accordingly to their members. Uh, so that, uh, inshallah, this uh, action will help us to curtail these atrocities. This agreement is expected to support the state government's effort to control prices for other goods as well. Some more stories. Concerned citizens of Yola, the Adamawa state capital, on Saturday gathered at the Nepa Central Mosque Eid Prayer Ground to offer special prayers for rain. The region has experienced a 25-day dry spell, leaving crops planted for the rainy season 
on the brink of destruction. Farmers in the state are worried about the impact of the drought on their crops, particularly maize and rice, which are withering due to the lack of rainfall. The situation prompted the chief imam of Demthawo Central Mosque, Salihu Usman Suleiman, to lead a two rakat prayer, urging the congregation to repent and pray for divine intervention. In his sermon, Suleiman emphasized the importance of supporting leaders and constituted authorities with prayers rather than criticizing them. He also cautioned against failing to give arms to the needy banditry and kidnapping, citing this as reasons for farming and drought. Dathan District Head of Jimeta Mohamedou Chubadou expressed gratitude to the attendees and directed that the prayers be continued daily until the rains return. Over in Jigawa, no fewer than 1,700 farmlands have been submerged with over 500 houses after heavy rains caused floors in Buji, local government area of the state. The flood, which mostly affected Gansa and Guadayi areas on Friday, 9th August 2024, led to the displacement of at least 1,200 people. Ali Rabiu completes the report. The district head of Gansa, Sabo Bello, said the heavy rains which led to the floods lasted for about three days, adding that over 1,000 farmland have been submerged and houses destroyed, while displaced persons are now taking shelter in less affected neighborhood and communities. We have reported, you know, to SEMA, we have reported and through SEMA to NEMA, and uh, we have also re reported to the to the honorable, you know, member representing, you know, uh, our constituency, UG, uh, local government, and also reported, you know, to uh, the Ministry of Environment. Other affected farmers and residents spoke on the extent of the damage caused by the flood and appealed for intervention from relevant stakeholders to cushion the effort on them. I lost my three farms and all the fertilizers we received on loan from the governor because I used them in the farms. Our prayer is for Allah to come to our rescue. We have been experiencing floods and as usual the floods have come again and we lost a lot including farm houses that we depend on for our daily survival. May Allah come to our aid. Personally, I lost only one farm and the fence of my house, but my father's two rooms collapsed. As a rest of this flood, houses have been destroyed, including farmlands. My house was not affected, but my farms were. After what happened to us, we can only trust Allah for help because we are in a very difficult situation. Right now, my husband is struggling to see how we can pack from this house because we are too many to manage in this place. Our fear again is that if by evening water enters the house, we will be forced to leave this place to somewhere else. There was heavy rains two days ago which flooded my house. Our sewage is blocked, while all the soccer wee pits have been flooded with water. Right now, we can't wash our clothes, cook, and carry out other house chores. We only get drinking water from the rain. Before now, we have been affected by floods, as water almost swept our homes. And now, we are still experiencing it again. We need help. In his response, the Executive Secretary of the State Emergency Management Agency, JSEMA, Dr. Haruna Meiriga, who represented Governor Malam Umar Namadi, said the government will ensure prompt evacuation of affected residents to a highland area and provide relief materials to help alleviate the suffering of victims. So we have to inform His Excellency that this is what is happening and quickly uh, send us to send his emissaries to condole with the people that uh, were affected by the incident. Uh, it is normal. Uh, when such things happen, it is we that we are supposed to fall. Uh, but uh, no wonder, uh, no, there is no any problem from wherever we receive the message. 
As the Regional Office of the National Emergency Management Agency, NEMA, Abdul Hadi Tuko, said the agency has visited the scene of the flood to assess the level of damages and reports to the head office for necessary support. Uh, at us now, so we need to respond to see if there is any IDPs. So if there is any displaced person, so they have to, we have to uh, locate them at the safer ground and then the state, uh, local government and the federal so we assist them. Because before the NEMA intervene so we have to see what the local what local government did and what the state government do then we name then we intervene in the aftermath of the flood some houses collapsed with many others submerged while residents are streaming through flood waters to safer places or to access their homes we move down south to Bios State, where it was a sorrowful moment for relatives as the corpses of 19 victims of Wednesday's morning boat mishap in southern Ijo local government area of the state were brought to Yanogwa. Recall that the tragic accident occurred when a wooden boat carrying over 62 passengers and crew members from Izde to one community to Yanogwa suddenly exploded and caught fire. Trust if it's Friday, remember where Peter tells us more. Chairman of the Maritime Workers Union of Nigeria by State Chapter, Ogoniba Ipigansi, regretted that death of the victims, which he largely attributed to a faulty engine and local diesel, which may be inside the boat. Ipigansi, however, dismissed a widely rumored account that the driver was refilling the boat with diesel while the engine was working, leading to the fire explosion. Negative report come, positive report come. But the report that what happened is that the engine got knocked. What they will say here yeah, that I can do is that when these boats are coming from that rural area, sometimes this diesel you normally get is all this uh, local diesel, which contaminates fuel, uh, kerosene, uh, diesel, all. Uh, this is, so immediately, something of knock, uh, fire is a little scratch, it cause fire. A survivor, Tamara Mienbi John narrated their ordeal from the scene of the incident while a relative Emmanuel Osilu expressed sadness over the loss of his siblings and friends who died in the course of the accident. When I wake up, I saw fire at the backside. So when I stand up, I to the inside. I stand, what will I do? Will I jump inside water? I said no. So when I went inside back, people are always already jumping uh, out going uh, down from the bridge. So when I go inside to go and carry my phone, I only hold my bag with my jacket because it says also dark and smooth. But so when I come out, I run to the front side. I'm seeing everybody, all the men are shouting for help. No way to help them. So I speak for John so because of the way they are shouting. They say, my phone is put in water. No way for me to swim because I don't have any way to they shout. Now, according to the story from the Lagos sauce, they have done two markets oh, yeah. on Wednesday. They are heading to another market that is a two, a kidney. So they are diesel the short. They wanted to refill the diesel and the engine was the on. So when they were pouring diesel, some part of the diesel poured to the engine. That is how fire escalated. On his part, the chairman sat and the local government area target, Segibo, who described the incident as unfortunate, berated the lack of adherence to safety measures, which it believed contributed to the devastating incident. How can you load people if you don't have fire? Maybe the fire would have started like a light rain. And instead of using the normal light rain, maybe some people would have I want to say that you are the the conflagration, more will come. And imagine when the weather is clear. You are like, if you look at the list, after this, I'm very sure you do not even know how to swim. 16 of the 20 casualties were brought back to the Yenagua, where their bodies were deposited at the mortuary of the Federal Medical Center. Meanwhile, 33 others survived the accident from Yenagua. Friday, a mobile way Peter reporting for Trust TV News. A landslide at a landfall in Uganda's capital, Kampala, has killed eight people, the city's authorities said on Saturday. The incident happened late Friday after heavy rainfall when sections of the landfill collapsed, covering some nearby houses, Ugandan media reported. Kampala's capital city authority said government and Red Cross personnel were searching the site and had rescued 14 people. The landfill, known as 
Kitezi. Has served as Kampala's sole garbage dump for decades and has turned into a big hill. Residents have long complained of hazardous waste from the site polluting the environment and posing a danger to people. Footage from NTV Uganda television showed people walking on a section of the landfill that had crushed parts of a house, while pictures from UBC Uganda showed an excavator attempting to dig up garbage. Parts of Uganda have been experiencing heavy rains in recent weeks, causing flooding and landslides though no fatalities had previously been reported. And finally in sports, Tamira Tola of Ethiopia on Saturday won the men's marathon title at the 2024 Paris Games in Olympic record time of 2 hours, 6 minutes, 26 seconds. The race was held in brutal heat and humidity over a course of hugely demanding hills. Tola, who was called into the Ethiopian team as a late replacement, won ahead of Belgium's Bashir Abdi will end the silver medal in two hours, six minutes and 47 seconds. And that's it for news updates at this hour. For more of our news programs and documentaries, to us on all our social media platforms and on our YouTube live stream. I am Chamaka Mwafo. Thank you so much for joining us.